Are can is KMP being used in production yet? Let's get into it. Hello, I'm Chris Athanas. I'm a KMP developer. Tech Sports coming out Tuesday. They said to close that thing up. I am going to be showing off a, a new ad that just came out from uh, Kotlin by JetBrains. <clears throat> Let's just put that there so you can see there. So it's Kotlin by JetBrains. And, um, and, and as a KMP developer, I, I am totally on board. I've been a KMP developer for almost a year, over a year now. And I am totally on board uh, with it because it just lets you deploy w w one code base, one language, one IDE that's coming from a company that this is their thing. This is what they do. This is, they don't do anything else. They do languages and IDEs and libraries. This is what they do. And so they have um, uh, one set of tooling to build it. What, uh, and you got the front end, uh, which is, consists of Android, iOS, web, desktop. Desktop includes Linux, includes uh, 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 Macintosh, includes Windows, and whatever else comes along. So, and it's a one UI layer, not several, not all different UIs. No, no, it's not, it's not sharing seventy five percent. You're doing ninety eight percent. Okay. I get my computer to give other. So yeah, so you have one, one language to do all that stuff. So what that means is, is so as the, as the people on the front end can look at the people on the back end and see most, all the code for all those different platforms is all the same. Most of it's the same. And you can, so using one serialization, one set of idioms, one thing. It just makes d development possible for one person to extend themselves to all those different platforms or to have people that are working on those different teams to have a common common thing they can talk about. Now each platform you're still doing native development. So that's the thing. You're not giving up. There's no Java JavaScript layer. This is all native development. Kotlin, that's the thing is crazy to understand. It compiles down to native. So on the web it's JavaScript or WASM, uh, the web, web assembly. Or on the, on the front end for, for Android, it's, it's Kotlin's JVM. And on iOS, it, it compiles down to Objective-C. And they're taking care of that. And they're making sure that shit's up to date. Uh, and and uh, it's a big part of how <coughs> KMP works. It's not, it's not the after effect like Microsoft. It's not a side project. It's the main thing they're doing. It's all, and This isn't going to come from Apple either because they're, they're a closed system. They're saying, no, you have to do it in our thing. It's like, okay, you have to do it in their thing. But they, they've, they've kind of got that problem solved. And, and Android's all board. Google says KMP is the default way you should be. Should be making that these applications. Wait, let, let me let the video out. At Bolt, we develop and support multiple mobile apps that empower millions of users on a daily basis. We have eight different applications that often need to share common features. Our mobile apps must provide a great and consistent user experience on iOS and Android. We were looking for a way to unify our iOS and Android SDKs work with our Kotlin API. We evaluated many cross-platform development solutions, and even though Kotlin multi-platform was still in beta back then, it seemed the most promising choice. What really drew us to KMP was its ability to let us keep our native application feel while sharing complex code easily. We started small by revamping the chat reconnect feature. Seeing the success, we then moved the entire chat engine to KMP. After a successful initial test with the payments feature, we expanded KMP to our entire McDonald's application. We saw fewer crashes and better performance across both platforms after the launch. Yeah. So I just say I've got two. I've got two applications in the uh, in the store. Actually, three. Both two that are using the Compose UI layers. I have had zero of crashes reported from uh, iOS and Android. I just, they're not. They're not. Thing doesn't crash. Rolled out KMP into the area of our S. A whole category of bugs gets completely skipped. By using Compose with this reactive stuff, it just you just skip a whole bunch of stuff that just doesn't. It's not going to show up. It's fine. Okay, where we could make the biggest impact, namely a complete rewrite of our Bluetooth library, which is used for most devices sold in the consumer market. We've decided to go ahead with Compose multi-platform for built-in calendar view. In less than three months, it was live on App Store and Google Play. Most of the yeah. client logic was implemented by a single Android developer. How are you doing? We can build features across platforms without team expansion or performance hits. We consolidated all our business logic into shared code, which means we can now develop once and deploy more. We transitioned yeah. from a separate Android and iOS team to a more unified mobile team. Yeah, yeah. See, it's really useful to have one person that kind of specializes 
in one in one of the platforms that's that also like learns about Kotlin and KMP, which isn't a big leap. It's just you know, but it's like once that person says, "Oh, I just learned Kotlin, I can do all this other stuff." It's like, yeah, pretty much, yeah. And you have to learn a little bit of each one of the names, like a web, the web stuff. You have to learn some H, some basic HTML. You have to learn some basic JavaScript. It's very, very not much at all. Uh, and, and with I, with iOS, you do have to learn a little bit of Swift. But with the AI assist tools, it's not that bad. It's like whatever, okay, whatever. And it's such a little amount that you don't have to do it. And the and the documentation for web and for and for iOS is it's actually quite good compared to what Android's been. So it's actually quite easy if you've been an Android developer. It's actually quite easy to learn these other platforms because there's so much documentation. It's so helpful, and the and the AI is pretty darn good at that stuff. So let's keep going. Before KMP adoption, we had an often heard saying, it works differently on iOS, but it has been a while since we heard that one. With this confidence, we're expanding the Kotlin multi-platform use throughout the company. And soon, we'll have more and more features and business logic powered by KMP. We believe Kotlin multi-platform will significantly influence software development by bridging the best of both worlds, the efficiency yeah. of a shared code base and the superior experience of native applications. And yeah. the best part, this efficiency came without the need to learn new language or hire new development. Well, you might have to learn your web guy might have to learn Kotlin, but he'll like it because he's like, now you can do iOS apps, now you can do desktop, now you can do, uh, you can learn the back end stuff. It's, now you're all open to it. And it's going to be different than the solid stuff that's been tested, battle tested for 10 years so far. But just by leveraging our existing knowledge of Kotlin. Yeah, for sure. Kotlin's a camp piece of juggernaut, man. Uh, so let's do, uh, let's check out what this guy has to say about. Uh, is Kotlin multi-platform killing Flutter? Uh, maybe. <laughs> the rise of Kotlin multi-platform is real. Is it time to step away from Flutter, or are they able to coexist? Yes. No. I wouldn't worry about it too much. For now. Ooh, yeah. yeah. This is a muscle. Yeah. That muscle. So I always get these typical questions about Flutter. Like, is Flutter better than this? Or why would you choose Flutter over that? And I always tell them, there's no real wrong answer. As long as you don't use web-based frameworks like Ionic or Cordova. Because... Is that even mobile development? Anyway. I mean, it's basically the same stuff Flutter's kind of doing. It just has a different, different la la layer between. I've used React Native. I've tried Ionic. Uh, I've d d d done uh, Web Components. Web Components is probably my favorite because it's stable, not changing. It's doing all the stuff that these people are doing without having all those crazy build steps. And Flutter only gives you what iOS and Android. That's it. Do they have a, I guess they have a web one too. But Okay, what are you doing there? I guess that, that works, but you don't. There's no back end. I think they may have tried to do a back end thing, but they're Google. I have a video on my channel. Like, Google's firing people of the Flutter team and the Dart team. That's not good. They haven't said that Flutter and Dart are going to be the future of Android. They haven't recommended Flutter to be the first thing they you people you, you should run. You should run to as a tool tool set. So it was a good technology. It actually was a proof of concept that allowed Compose to kind of be the how to how to do it. You put it a little. You put your you have a little paint rectangle and you do your whole app in there, uh, which is very secure as well. Um, let's keep going. Anyway, as much as I love Flutter, I won't push it if it doesn't make sense. If you already have an existing product, tech stack, team, or just have a look at your own skill set, then it might make more sense to go for something else. If you already know JavaScript or you have a team of developers that already know TypeScript, then it makes more sense to go for React Native. You know? Ugh. Ugh. If you like, you do iOS, right? This is what I found out with React Native. Like, Android fell over and they didn't, it hasn't gotten back up. And that was, that was two years ago. I, I was like, okay, you guys, this is, this is not a serious thing. You got, Facebook has got doing Facebook's react native is not Facebook's main thing. Let's put it that way. They're not super like really jazzed up about it. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to go through the hassle of hiring new developers or letting all your existing developers take a course. I mean, it's fun, but business wise, not fun, but you might as well get the KMP train. This upgraded college, it's not that hard. Yeah, it's not that difficult to get from Dart to, to Kotlin. It's actually the, the upgrade. It just doesn't make sense. Now, with both. Oh, maybe it does. Maybe somebody sees, okay, this Flutter thing's almost over and nobody's asking for it anymore. And it's this KMP thing's starting to pop. And I can just side, side set, step into it. It's all, it's not that big of a step. Now, Android is a little bit of a hairy beast. But with K, with Kotlin, oh, with, with uh, Compose only apps, like I have a couple examples of, it's not that bad. Kotlin multi-platform, there's yet another kid on the block when it comes to cross-platform development. But I'm here to tell you that there's a clear difference. Kotlin multi-platform is functional on multiple platforms, much like Flutter. So you have support for Android, iOS, web, and even desktop. It is, however, not a UI framework. 
This means that you can write all your business logic in Kotlin, deploy it on multiple platforms, but you will still have to write your separate UI layer for every platform that you want to support. Wrong. <laughs> that was a month ago. He didn't know about Compose for iOS. Come on, that's been around for a while. He didn't see the Compose for desktop. That's been around for a while now. He didn't see the Compose for web. He doesn't see that yet. No, he doesn't see it all, all the different things, but come on now. Flutter, on the other hand, is a full-blown cross-platform framework, giving you the ability to write all of your code once from UI to business logic. And that's how it is now in KMP. The, the, the UI layer is in beta now. It's about to be released probably by the time you see this video. So that's out the window. And deploy it on multiple platforms. This significant difference should give you a clear choice and proves their harmonious coexistence. Even Google... No. No. Bye-bye, Flutter. <laughs> that's not harmonious. You just became irrelevant. As soon as the Compose stuff comes out on iOS and people become aware that that's now a pathway to make iOS applications, which I have one, I have two in the store, three in the store right now. Two are using the Compose UI that were beta and alpha versions, which are great. They work fine. That once people figure out that, oh yeah, Flutter, bye-bye, Flutter. And then all, all oh man, there'd be so much, and the iOS developers who are going to like learn Kotlin so they can do iOS apps because it's not that bad. It's not different, that much different than Swift and their Swift UI. It's not that different. It's not, but it's much more thought through and much more, I think it's sophisticated, more sophisticated. In this particular case, other things with Apple are more sophisticated, but this UI toolkit is more than what the Swift UI, how it does its stuff. So it's, I think it's better. Well, itself stands by the separation and choice of technology. If you just need to share business logic between multiple platforms, go for Kotlin multi-platform. If you need Wrong. to share both business logic and UI between platforms to have a single code base for everything, go with Flutter. No, now can be. But what about Compose multi-platform? The difference between Kotlin multi-platform and Flutter is a clear one in my opinion. But what happens if we put Compose multi-platform into the mix? Compose multi-platform is a cross-platform UI framework by JetBrains. It's still a work in progress though. It's stable on Android through Jetpack Compose, and it's stable on desktop, meaning Mac, Windows, and Linux. On web, it's still in the alpha stage, and on iOS, it's still in the beta stage. So, in that sense, Flutter is the clear winner here. It's way more mature than Kotlin multi-platform uh, and Compose multi-platform no, are at the moment. Good guy. I know it's still beta, but they're very, but they're very, uh, they've been very cautious with their betas. They're not doing the Google style shit where they just release it in beta and still change stuff. No, if it's in beta, it's, it's solid, man. It's, I've been in month for months. I've had it in the store for months. But I am curious to see how things will pan out. Compose and Flutter share the same technique, as in that they both draw their pixels on an empty canvas. Yeah. Both make use of declarative UI, both have a strongly typed language, they're both yeah. very suitable for full-stack development, yeah. and they both offer very good interoperability with existing native apps. Is there even space for a similar yes. framework then? And should you drop Flutter? I'll be honest with you. Yes. Compose multi-platform does look very promising. Whether or not... Yes, because it's native. It's not a thing running in the middle. It's letting the stuff is running natively. <laughs> it's so hard. Those guys really go... The KMP stuff pulled it off with the doing the shit native. Because you can write, unless oh, that's really crazy. It's like you can write the iOS code in Kotlin. You don't have to use Swift. You can actually write the iOS code in Kotlin, which is kind of chippy because there's like no examples of this, how to do it. And the AI kind of guesses around and kind of gets it. And it's like, whoa, you're in Kotlin. iOS native code in Kotlin. It's badass. Not Flutter will live to tell the tale. All depends on a few things. Things like the current adoption, community support and involvement, which is awesome. The added benefits of Compose, as well as yeah, the, the, the KMP people are on fire. The internal architecture. Flutter is set up in such a way that whenever they want to support a new platform, they only have to write a small platform specific layer. Flutter runs its own engine, meaning that it leverages the same things on every platform. Only the small communication layer with the platform itself is different. This means Flutter can move fast and is very flexible. Apart from that, the move- I mean, KMP's got the, this, took the same strategy. Everything that's the, each each individual platform can have its own st special stuff that gets called from the from the Kotlin side. So they took the idea. It's like we just took a, boop, our idea now <laughs> from the Skia rendering engine, the one that composed also. No, it's been like this for a while. But like there's only so many different ways they can do it, and the way they did the language how it's set up inside with the actual and expected stuff is pretty cool, man. It's like works Users, great. Flutter's own impeller engine is also a very good one to differentiate and improve compared to other frameworks. At the same time, interoperability with an existing native app can be hard at times. Whereas the solution that composed Yeah, the KMP stuff is super easy. I have a bunch of examples like in the Fred's Road Trip Storyteller. I've got the billing, the billing stuff that's all separated out. It's totally platform specific. You know, one uses the Play Store, one uses uh, the Apple Store. 
Uh, I've got the speech stuff is different for each one. It was it was so easy setting that stuff with the with the share flow and the and and the state flow. It's super awesome. Like it's like oh my god, I can't believe this stuff fucking works. Because I'm usually very disappointed with these cross platform applications. I'm just like this stuff sucks. But like KMP, I'm like I was expecting it just to be terrible. Like the, gar- the stuff that Google put out was all the garbage. I was expecting it to be bad. It was like not. I'm like fuck. Pose multi-platform offers looks very easy to set up. I'll drop a link in the description below for more information on that. Next to that, the big benefit that Compose multi-platform has is that it can already leverage a big pool of existing developers. Kotlin has been the go-to language of Android for years, and since 2021, Android also uses Jetpack Compose as their native UI framework, okay. meaning that when Android developers will start using Compose multi-platform and Kotlin multi-platform, they'll feel right at home. For now... Yeah, there's no... That you're just writing, you're just doing Kotlin and Compose. What? It's like there's not... It's like, they even brought... There's even just recently brought over the view model stuff and bring over Roam. And all, so all your, your 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 Android stuff is all there that you want. I don't recommend using it. I say use just Kotlin only apps and forget that crap. But maybe sometimes with a sophisticated thing, you might need to do a view model. But maybe you could just skip it. You don't you don't have to use view models. Oh my god! Is there the ping pong ping pong ping pong ping pong ping pong ping pong? It's just there it is right there right there in the code. Boop boop boop. That's like right there's the jump. Oh, it's right there. I wouldn't worry too much about Kotlin multi platform as opposed to Flutter. Even Google says so. Oof. Eat those words. But do keep a close eye on the development of Kotlin multi-platform and Compose multi-platform, because I do think it's going to be a tight race in the end. Don't forget to oh, like, subscribe, gonna, and I'll see you in the next one. It's gonna kick Cheers. the flutter's ass. Yeah. It's gonna kick the flutter's ass yeah. so bad, so bad. All right, I'll be, I'll be nice. I'll be nice. Okay, so now I do to look a one little one minute about how software architecture thinks versus programmers. So let's listen to that. Programmers use something called linear thinking. Linear thinking is about direct problem solving. It's mathematical, it's concrete. You, your focus is in getting correct answers. And it's the key skill for a software engineer. If you can't think in a linear way, you're not going to write good code. As you move to architecture, you need to think in a different way. And this is called lateral thinking. And it's vague and it's fluffy. And it's asking what if and using your imagination. And this is one of the things we have to unlock to be able to do this. Architects need to be able to do both of these things. And then you have- Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna do both. Yeah, if you're going to be a KMP developer doing adventure-driven stuff, yeah, you got to do both. You both got to go wide and go figure out what, like, what problem can I solve? Who can I work with on this issue? Who's my customer? How do they want to be treated? What is my ethical concerns? What's my moral basis? What's my political view? <laughs> What's my artistic ethic? Who is my, what are my customers? What do they care about? Right? That's that lateral view. And then, oh, now I'm going to do it with my specific solution. So that's going to be very... Well, not necessarily mathematical, but concrete. It's like we're going to have this screen. These are going to have the buttons on here. This is the thing that's going to be on there. That's going to represent this over here. And they go this to this, and they press this button here, press this button here, and this other thing happens over here. And this guy shows up in your door, and they take the thing, and then your air app does the thing, and everybody's – yeah, that stuff. That's all concrete. And you got to be – you got to know how to do all those little pieces and put that stuff together, and that's just how – that's the linear – and then you have to ask yourself the question, do I want to be an engineer and live in the linear world where everything's easy and code and logic? And I don't- Oh, it's easy? I don't know. The thing changes a lot. You got to keep up with a bunch of shit. With KMP, it's, it's a little easier because there's now just one then that you can then leverage and not have to worry about all the other stuff too much. I mean, AI definitely helps with that stuff. I have to talk to people or do I want to live in the fluffy lateral world? And if you read these two books oh. and see how it feels, you'll get a good sense of which one of these am I? No, they have to be both. You have to have both, man. I'm sorry the days of separating these roles out is kind of over. The book, uh, How to Solve It, is linear thinking. It tells you how to solve problems. It should be very familiar to most of you, the, the techniques that are used in there. The second book is on lateral thinking by De Bono, and it talks about how you can actually train yourself to think outside of these rigid logical structures that you've been taught in your computer science degrees at university. Or just listen to me rant. <laughs> university. Um, linear thinking. It turns out that the very best developers are usually excellent linear thinkers, and sometimes when you push them into architecture without preparation, it can, it can be very, very painful because it's a completely different way of looking at the world. But if you go back to the basics and have a look at your philosophical beliefs about the world, then these things become much, much easier. Well, you got to go back, both, back and forth between both of them. There's not one or the other. Not, I mean, some people are more one way and some people are more on the other way, uh, but you know, they all deserve, you, if you really want to become adventure driven, you got to blend all that stuff together. All right, uh, I think that's about it for me. Uh, I'm Chris Athanas. This is uh, uh, this is my channel. I like to rant about software, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.